Hey guys, Captain Mike, Whiskey and Wittichick coming at you today with The Whiskey, Uncle Nearest 1856. My book review this week was Beloved by Toni Morrison about a runaway slave dealing with the consequences of slavery and racism. I knew I had to finally pick up a bottle of Uncle Nearest for the tie-in. If you'd like to see that book review, it'll be in the description, the link. Uncle Nearest. I became aware of this brand and distillery in 2020 watching the Today Show. Al Roker was interviewing the founder, Fawn Weaver, and their master blender, the great, great granddaughter of Uncle Nearest, Victoria Eddie Butler. Quick rundown. Nathan Nearest Green was a former slave who was Jack Daniels' first master distiller and taught and perfected with him the Lincoln County process whereby whiskey is distilled through a charcoal process. And this process perfection was completed in 1856, hence the name of the whiskey. So of course I went to their website to get some information on this whiskey, and it is very sparse. According to the website, uh, 1856 is an award-winning whiskey. It is astonishingly smooth. It's bottled at 100 proof and can be enjoyed neat, on the rocks, or even in a cocktail. The only information on the website that I could find that was really of value was that there is some of Uncle Nearest's own whiskey from their barrels in this bottle. There is no age statement and no given mash bill. Looking online for the mash bill, it is all over the place and pure speculation. Everything from at least 51% corn with a high rye, that's pretty likely. And some people said it's as high as 90% corn. So, mash bill, unknown. Same for the age. Some say that it's at least four years old. Others that it's at least seven years old. And there is some speculation that it's eight to 14 year old whiskeys in this bottle. Uncle Nearest was founded in 2017. So even if they began immediately distilling whiskey, it's 2023 and so if as their website says, there is some of their own distillates in this bottle. There is some whiskeys in here that are only, at the most, six years old. I can imagine that those reports of older whiskeys are probably from when 1856 first came out because they were just sourcing all the whiskey that was in this bottle originally. They probably had some older whiskeys and then as they are blending their own distillates into the product, the age is going to come down. So I would assume for a couple of years, we're probably right in that sweet spot right now, for a couple of years, we're gonna have maybe a younger whiskey in here until their own barrels get a little more age on them. And then the age of 1856 will probably start creeping back up. I actually had my very first pour of Uncle Nearest whiskey and the 1856 last night. And I was kind of expecting a Jack Daniels flavor profile and experience just because it's kind of from the same place and the same process, so that was my initial thought. But I realized that the only thing this whiskey has in common with Old Number 7 is that they both went through the Lincoln County process. I don't get any of those huge banana notes that I get on Old Number 7, either on the nose or on the palate from 1856. I felt like last night, as I was nosing the 1856, that I was getting some hints of maybe some spices that I associate with a rye whiskey or a high rye bourbon or American whiskey. But I'm not getting that today. I don't get any of those kind of same notes. It's more just sweet, not caramel, maybe, maybe honey or something like that. That's really what I'm getting on the nose today. I actually really like the nose. I probably prefer, I, I really like that banana note. I get in the Woodford Reserve. I get in the old number seven. That's one of my favorite notes that I get as I'm smelling a whiskey and I don't get it in this one. But it's still, it's nice. No, none of that spice note today. I don't know what was going on last night. Man, that immediate first taste is just pure sweetness coming in. And then it's kind of overpowered or overwhelmed by just a hint of a burn which takes away that sweetness I get some sugar initially, and then it's just kind of gone with just a hint of a burn. 100 proof, uh, it's not really crazy high, it's just, it's a, nice, uh, it's a nice proof, but nothing amazing. And then it just kind of settles down into a nice, nice finish. 
Alright guys, for me, this is a decent whiskey that falls short of greatness. Especially, I paid $59.99 for this bottle last night for my local liquor store. I think MSRP is $52.99, and even at that price, I would expect a little more. Maybe I want some more proof or something like that to make it a little more to my to my taste. I will be looking out for an Uncle Nearest rye. I've been kind of rye forward lately, so I am gonna try their rye and see what I think about that. This is not gonna be my go-to whiskey, though I will never be sad to drink it. Okay, my friends, I hope you're reading something good and drinking something great. Turn those pages and stay thirsty.